I hesitate to call this a gun for obvious reasons. I was thinking coming up the road tonight, what can we call it besides an air launcher? Well, we can call it a antenna tree hanger. Come up with your own. <laughs> it will take you longer to get the parts for it than it will to build it, far longer. Everything I have here came from Lowe's. Um, let me get the next slide. We'll go to the um, parts list. I'll get to it. Uh, where is the slideshow? There it is. Oh, yeah? There we go. Yeah, right. Of course, it may glue the cap on. Um, here are the parts. Uh, first thing you need to do is use a reservoir for the air. The only three inch reservoir that I, uh, pipe that I could find says not for pressure. But I've used that in my other one for a good while. I think it was not for pressure on the other one. And uh, I've had it to 100 PSI with no problem. You need an end cap to seal the end. You need an adapter to go from three inch to one and a half inches. And I drilled and tapped things before because I didn't want to bring my drill press. Um, the air valve is the same air valve that you'll have on a pump pressure tank. You should be able to get it at Lowe's. I bought it from Amazon. Um, it's a, a quarter inch uh, pipe thread, national pipe thread. The pressure gauge in this case is a, is a uh, excuse me, this is an eighth inch uh, national pipe thread. The pressure gauge is a quarter inch, but if you can get it an eighth of an inch, it'll probably be better. Um, put it in with Teflon tape. I haven't had any problems with Teflon tape on those leaking. I have had problems with Teflon tape leaking on the coupling between it. And in that case, I used um, the compound and it cured it. A lot of plumbers now are using the Teflon tape and the compound. Oh yeah? Use both. Well, the, the secret is once you put it together, pressurize it to about 40 PSI, leave it overnight. If it's dropped more than a pound or two, why you have a leak. Um, so, let's build it. Um, you need cement. That's why I bought the base grip. <laughs> Maybe. There we go. I, oh yeah, let me let me say that the pipe comes in 18-inch links. You don't want to use 18-inch links because. When you do that, the valve is so far ahead of you, you can't reach it. So I cut it to be between 12 and 14 inches is a good. You just did it with a hacksaw? Yeah, I just did it with a hacksaw. I forgot, and I used something right up against it so that I could, what did I do, put it in the voice? I've forgotten what I did, but anyway, it, it's a pretty good cut. And clean it up good. Um, so the first thing we do, besides so getting all the junk out of there, is use the primer or the cleaner. Because then you buy the combination, right? What do you mean? <laughs> uh, maybe. I don't know. I haven't looked. They make a glue that's a primer. Well, I'll tell you a little story on that. If you want a story that that's a little bit different. When I was back in about 1972 working at National Bureau of Standards, I did test on, on the early plastic pipe um, to uh, break it, see where the failures were. We had plumbers come in building the samples, and I built some samples. And we were having a lot of problems with the glue joints going before the pipe <coughs> failed. I played around a little bit, and I found one of the secrets for it. We still don't know why it, exactly why it works. We have a, suspicion. Use an acid brush. Dip it in the primer and do radial sweeps around there. 
Now, why does that work? Well, we think that the primer softens the surface just a little bit, and the stiff brushes make little micro grooves in it. It gives more surface area for the glue. But after I did that, I had virtually no failures on glue joints. Not important here. The other thing is, when you put this together, say to yourself, I'm going to make a quarter inch turn as I put it on. You'll never do it. You'll be lucky if you get five degrees. But try to turn it just a little bit. I like to put a little glue on both pieces. Now, is this finished product going to be raffled tonight? Well, again, yeah. <laughs> we'll need to sign a waiver. A waiver on that, but not for, not for pressure. You put the primer on the other one, right? Nah, you don't need it on that one. Not really. I a little more than five on that one. I don't recommend pressurizing it immediately after you build it. I'd leave, I'd leave it six or eight hours anyway. Okay. Well, on this one, let, let's let's do the primer on everything. The only thing I recommend when you, especially the first time you pressurize it, if you're going to have a failure on any, any of this, it's probably going to be the gauge is going to blow out. Be sure it's not pointed at you. And use what you have at home. If you have leftover plastic pipe, use it. potatoes. That's why I don't really like to call it a potato gun, but everybody knows it is that. <clears throat> Got about 15 or so degrees on that one. Okay, now we have our air canister done. We have to put an adapter in it. Now when you, when you buy this adapter, you can get them either smooth or threaded. It's much easier to put it together if it's a threaded one. Once again, we do the same thing. I'm sorry? Is that glue a couple years old? No, this is fairly recent. <sighs> okay. And a little bit of glue on my hand. It's okay. Now, I'm going to use Teflon tape on this just because it's well, I don't know. It's not any faster. Let's use this. Except it's not open. Use the Teflon tape. Even though I have problems sometimes with Teflon tape, it wants to do its own thing. Was it easy to tap the hole for? Mm, it wasn't for me because I found my tap handle didn't fit the tap. So I had to put the tap in with just a wrench oh, okay. on, on it and uh, oh, come on and uh, but if you have the right turn handle which I got to get one Harbor Freight, yeah. Harbor Freight right is it a special tap for plastic versus metal no Good. if it is I didn't use it <laughs> now, like I say if you get a leak it's most likely going to be right here if you use Teflon tape That's the nice thing. Of, well, it's not going to leak if you glued it, but uh, then you can't take it apart easily.
glue hadn't set up yet. Good. At least the external glue hadn't. That's good enough for now. Can always change this later if it leaks. I'll check it out tomorrow if it leaks. Now, Ron K4RKA made a little handle for this for me. He took a piece of, uh, I guess, I think it was two inch plastic pipe, cut a little notch in it to shape of the handle and just slipped it over here so he could do it. But I used, a, I used it for a lot of, a long time, just turning it. And it loosens up a little bit after you use it a while. It's a little. Is that a 90 degree or is that a full 360? It's a 90 degree. Now, you need a barrel. The barrel is a one and a quarter inch by two inch. What is it? It's one and a quarter inch pipe. I've forgotten which one it is. Uh, this is the adapter. Oh, this is the pipe. One and a quarter inch by two feet. I think I didn't cut this down because the barrel is not critical. You don't want it too short. You don't want it too long. So we need to glue this. Okay, there's the primer. I think they say put the glue on both both uh, pieces, but I've done it with just one piece before and hadn't had a problem. Okay. I just screwed up. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I got pointed the wrong way. Okay, so now you don't need anything on this thread because it's after the valve. If it leaks, it's only going to have air on it for 10 milliseconds or something. It doesn't matter. So you don't even bother with Teflon tape? I don't even bother with Teflon tape. You know, it, it's gone in yes. half a second or less, and you know, if you've got a little leak, it doesn't matter. Okay, there's, there's the complete gun. Now, buy Zebco 33 reel. Let's get the next slide. And just real fast here, where's the. That, that just gives you the small stuff, and of course, we started with that, and we did that, and. Now, we're going to go with that. So, take a piece of, uh, well, number one, three-quarter inch end caps, as you'll notice, will fit pretty well down in here. However, there's a few mold marks on here. You may have to file them down just a little bit to get it to slide all the way in. But this is what I call a shuttle. Take one end cap, drill a small pilot hole, <coughs> excuse me, Screw in an, an eye hook and put a fishing swivel on it. Use a Zebco 33 reel, and uh, you can just uh, hook your fishing line to this, and then after you shoot the, the projectile, you can just take it loose like that, and pull the rope up. Okay. Not bigger than 10 psi. I'm using six right now simply because I had about a mile and a half of it. Um, so you take your three-quarter inch pipe, you cut it to whatever length you want is not critical. Um, I use just use the copper pipe cutter to cut it. And the one end you glue. This is the end that has the eye hook on it. Woo! That's why I brought the. That's exactly why I brought the um, paper. Thank you. I didn't think you'd want that on your. Yeah. 
Okay, you put them together, hopefully. It's going to take a little while for that excess glue to harden externally. And I just, on the, on the other end, I just put it on with pressure. The idea was you can take it off if you need a little heavier uh, shuttle, I refer to it as a shuttle, you can just pull it off, put some fishing weights in there or something. The, I haven't tried it. Maybe when you fire it, the, the weights might want to pull the cap off. Maybe, because it goes in this way, so it's firing that way. Well, the weight's going to go that way, isn't it? And then it's going to come out and it's going to swivel. Is a hook, did you just use a machine screw? Just, a, just a hook? an eye hook. Is it just threaded in? Or mm -hmm. I, just drill, I just drilled a little pilot hole to get it started and then just threaded it in. Okay, so there's no washer and none of Nope, nope. I've never had the eye hook fail. So I've had plenty of swivels there. fail, but not any eye hooks. Yeah. And that's it. That's it. And usually, if you have an air compressor, that's the easy way to fill it. Uh, uh, from my house, 100 pounds will put it into Nelson County. <laughs> well, maybe not quite that far, but it, it'll, it'll do almost straight up. It'll probably do 200, 250 feet at 100 PSI. Yeah, 60 to 70 was yeah. what we did, and we put it over one big tree. Right. I, and, of course, the distance you're... Further away you are, the more pressure you're going to need to get it over the high tree just for the distance. But um, I put it over about a, I don't know, I'm guessing about an 80-foot tree the other day with about 70 PSI in it. And I was probably 100 feet from the tree. I don't. That, the weight of that, the weight of that is enough to bring it all the way through the... This is this is this is the the projectile, and if you if you knock off those um, mold marks, it'll drop in very easily. And in fact, when you set it this way and drop it, you'll hear it go clunk, and you know it's at the bottom. But this one's a little tight. This one I need to file the. The marks down. The right here. Use a, use a regular Zepco reel and a couple of uh, hose clamps. That's it. That's it. Uh, if you have a spinning reel, just use whatever you have. Say, say, the Zepco is about $12, $13 from Amazon. And it's, it, I had a cheaper Zepco that didn't hold up. The 33 seems to be holding pretty good. I haven't had any failures with it. And. Uh, if I'm right, do your barrel kind of get better accuracy? Pardon? <laughs> you can put a sight on it, yeah. And you, you'll have to come up with a way to hold it. I usually put it right there or right here so you can sight across it. But I found the other day with the wind blowing, you think that little monofilament, six-pound monofilament line has practically no resistance to it. I put the... I put the shuttle right over the tree where I wanted it, but the line, which is what I really wanted, was 20 feet away. It, it came down over another antenna. So you got to wait till a quiet day to shoot it, reasonably quiet, or make a big adjustment on where you aim. So what happens when you need to do a second try? So you shoot it, and then go where you want it. You just cut the line? And you no, you just, you, you go take, you go under the shuttle, so the only thing that's left on here is the swivel. Wind it back up through the trees or whatever, and, and especially when you get to a limb, don't wind too fast because you don't want it to come up that limb and hit it and then do that around the limb. Then you break it and start over. That's why I say have a, have a handful of shuttle, a handful of swivels, and you're going to want more than one shuttle because you're going to eventually lose them. There's one up in the tree down, down at the... Uh, at the 9-11 uh, center that I lost one field day uh, that did that, I think. Uh, I'm sorry? Yeah, right. And another thing, th this is why I left it open so I could add weight. If you're going through very dense foliage on the other side of the tree, 
You might want to add white just to be sure it comes all the way down to the ground. And once it hits the ground, wind it back equivalent to a couple of feet so it's not buried in the leaves. Then you can see it. Also, you may want to pay the day glow orange. Help a little bit in seeing it. Jim, about six years ago, I first moved to Al Bob and came over with his potato launcher. And just when the potato came and hit the ground, I heard a deer by after the potato. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I heard of catching fish, but I never heard of catching deer. <laughs> So that's it. Now we have a potato gun that's uh, probably illegal. Right, Dayton? Yeah. No? You can voluntarily turn it in probably next year. Yeah, right. Well, you think they'll give me $100 for it? It's invaluable. It's just priceless. Yeah. And, and I, have, I have tried easy hangs. I have tried bow and arrows, I've tried fishing uh, rods, I could never do anything with them. If, in fact, with the easy hang, if I got one good shot at a 20, I was lucky. This one, if it's a quiet day, I can usually get it, certainly on the second shot, usually on the first shot. The, the problem is if you need a lot of pressure and you don't have an air compressor, you're going to have to use a bicycle pump. And it gets heavy when you get up to around 45, 50 pounds. You almost have to lay into it. So it'll, it'll, it'll work you. So I recommend, if you can, use an air compressor or an air tank. And the nice thing about this is you can just take it, unscrew it, and you've got a nice little breakdown. Yeah. What was his gift? <laughs> oh yeah, you, you could. I, in fact, the first barrel I made, I made too small. I couldn't find anything that would slip into it. In fact, I think this is the size I used. And I said, well, these caps, if they'll go in something, will be perfect. And I found it go in the uh, what is it, an inch and a quarter, whatever it was. Well, what's this? Inch and a quarter. Um, and it, you know, that just works out perfect. Then, yeah. I made something very similar to this for my kids. Mm -hmm. I used that smaller barrel and pool noodles fit right over the top of that smaller barrel and mm -hmm. make rockets out. Of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, let's see. A shotgun shell ought to fit in there pretty good. I wonder. I wonder if uh, Don might tell me if if the air pressure would be enough to set the primer off. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Have you patented this? No, because I there's so many of these out on the web, how to build them, and I used a, a, an example of one that was on the web to, to more or less do this one, but I did make some changes in it. Yeah. And um, yeah, the, the the one thing also is that when you're launching that thing, you have to turn that handle quick. You can't that's right. turn it yeah. slow. Yeah. It's got to go all at once. But I found you don't really need to go all the way if you go. 70 or 80 degrees, that's usually enough, because by the time you get to 70 80 degrees, it's left there. That's another reason for using 3 inch, you've got a lot more volume. I, I built two or three of those things and had some modifications. Mine is a true potato launcher, and those John Yeah, the, I know. And I do like that because it's a the potato will disintegrate and have to hit like you call a windshield. The potato will disintegrate. Well, that's true. So you look at airing on that side. I know Jim and I have talked about that. Yeah. Because one of the original models, they used an electric solenoid yeah. to actually do the firing. I bought a solenoid. I haven't tried it. I, I did do one. I tried and I found that it had failed. What I did like about it, it was a quicker release than these kinds of valves. Yeah. That idea was good if it would have worked. I don't think the orifice, yeah, right. I don't think build, it opens enough. It wouldn't build up, it wouldn't hold the pressure. Right. But the, um, the lever is an issue. 
those valves are pretty stiff, and I did the same thing as I put an outboard. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't there. bring the lever that Ron made, but it's yeah. it's only about that long. It gives you a little more leverage, yeah. and, but you do have to work on them pretty quick. Right. But, uh, the one I had, uh, it, it does pretty well. Yeah. A couple hundred feet is not a problem. You know, I found if you squirt a little silicone down, it seems to loosen yeah. up. Yeah. Like I say, after you use it a while, yeah, it, loosens it loosens up, up some. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Probably silicone. I don't know whether silicone would. I think I should have gone to the It's not going to dissolve the plastic. No. So Mike Gilmore did one of these, uh, and we used tennis balls. Okay. And with a little weight in them. So you're going to have to uh, use a bigger pipe. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Pipe. and there, I, I, if I recall correctly, we actually had a trigger mechanism with, which was electric, so yeah. we didn't have the, the time going with the, the, the valve. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just wondering, I haven't tried it, I wonder if a golf ball would fit in it. I think it's a little bit too small for golf balls. Probably, yeah. I haven't tried it, I'll have to try that one again. I'd hate to be on the other side. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> you just yell four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So that's all it is to it. Like I say, it'll it'll take more time to get all the parts together, go to Lowe's, find what you want in the bins, and check out than it will to build it. The the tapping and uh, drilling and tapping took me probably 15, 20 minutes, something like that at the most. And you saw how quick the rest of it goes together. But like I say, don't pressurize it for at least eight hours, just to be sure that the glue is good and solid. And make you up a bunch of shuttles. You next, Dan, or whoever's next. Why don't we take about a five-minute break?